Please, let us stand for the word of God. Today's reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 14, verse 1 to 10. At Iconium, Paul and Barnabas went, as usual, into the Jewish synagogue. There they spoke so effectively that a great number of Jews and Greeks believed. But the Jews who refused to believe started up with the other Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brothers. So Paul and Barnabas spent considerable time there speaking boldly for the Lord, who confirmed the message of his grace by enabling them to perform signs and wonders. The people of the city were divided. Some sided with the Jews, others with the apostles. There was a plot afoot among the Gentiles and Jews, together with their leaders, to mistreat them and stone them. But they found out about it and fled to the Lyconian city of Lystra and Derby, and to the surrounding country, where they continued to preach the gospel. In Lystra, there sat a man who was lame. He had been that way from birth and had never walked. He listened to Paul as he was speaking. Paul looked directly at him. Paul looked directly at him so that he had faith to be healed and called out. Stand up on your feet. At that, the man jumped up and began to walk. Thank you, God, for your miraculous word that changes us as we hate it in our hearts. Thank you. you. may be seated. Thank you, James. Happy Sunday, everybody. Uh, you know, we Christians also, we call this the Lord's Day uh, because Jesus rose from the grave on the first day of the week. Uh, and so every Sunday is a celebration of Easter, right? Uh, you know, I learned from, that a family uh, from Faith Westwood was in Jamaica over Easter and uh, that some of them worshipped with us online on the beach. That means Faith Westwood has a satellite campus in Jamaica, or at least they did that day. Uh, and so uh, all of you worshiping online today, that's where I imagine you. That's where you are. I imagine you sitting on a beach, your toes nestled in the warm sand with a gentle breeze caressing your face. Meanwhile, here in Omaha, we're setting record low temperatures today. Uh, last Sunday, we started a nine-week series called The Adventure on the Three Missionary Journeys of the Apostle Paul. And uh, today, the adventure continues. Our theme verse for this series is Acts 13.4. Let's say it together, shall we? The two of them were sent on their way by the Holy Spirit. And you and I will be sent on our way by the Holy Spirit if we're listening and willing to go. And, and now I invite you to join with me as we uh, pray this classic prayer to the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come as the fire and burn. Come as the wind and cleanse. Come as the light and reveal. Show me my sin. Turn me around. Set me apart until I am wholly yours. In Christ's name I pray, amen. When I was 15, I told God, if you're really there, I want proof. I want to see a genuine, undeniable miracle. Otherwise, I may have to give up believing in you. Now, was that unfair of me to give God that ultimatum? Maybe. It reminds me of when I was a little kid. Uh, many times my family was, was riding in the car at night after visiting my grandparents. And uh, I had never seen a falling star. I really wanted so badly to see a falling star. And so I leaned my head against the cool glass of the back seat window. And I looked up in the sky and I picked out a star. And I stared at it. And waited for it to fall. It never did. 
You see, I assumed that falling stars were actual stars in the galaxy that somehow lost their balance and came tumbling down. I didn't know that falling stars were bits of space rock hurtling up and burning up in our atmosphere. Uh, now, if I had kept maybe a wider view of the sky instead of focusing on just one star, maybe my chances of seeing a falling star would have been better. And I think it's somewhat the same with miracles. Demanding that I see a certain miracle or a certain kind of miracle that I want is like staring at a star and waiting for it to fall. And it might have prevented me from seeing where God was at work. Today's message is pray for signs and wonders. What are signs and wonders? Well, according to the Bible, they are miracles with a purpose. They are miracles that point to the truth of God's message. In the New International Version, which is what we have in our pews here, uh, the, the exact phrase, signs and wonders, can be found 21 times in the Bible. Uh, for example, God performed many signs and wonders to free the Israelites uh, from slavery in Egypt. Right? And, and Jesus performed signs and wonders that gave credibility to his claim to be Messiah. But he also knew that if our faith is totally based on miracles, if it's totally based on these signs and wonders, then our faith is on shaky ground. So our faith must be based on truth. He warned us that about false messiahs and false prophets, that they will also perform signs and wonders and will deceive many people. Five times in the book of Acts, the phrase signs and wonders is used, including in today's passage. And there's a sixth one where the words are reversed, wonders and signs, and then there's plus many similar expressions. Now, earlier in the book of Acts, before the passage that James just read to us, Peter and John, the apostles, are, they enter the temple in Jerusalem, and in the name of Jesus, they healed a middle-aged beg beggar whose feet and ankles have been crippled since birth. And when people see this man walking and leaping and praising God, they are amazed, filled with wonder. We might say today it freaked them out. <laughs> Peter sees that he now has an audience, and so he tells them about Jesus. And he, and he calls them to repent and, so that their sins may be forgiven. Peter and John end up getting arrested for saying that Jesus is the Messiah and uh, are locked up in jail overnight. The next day, they're brought out, they're interrogated, threatened, and finally released. They return to a group of fellow believers, and they have a prayer meeting. And here's part of their prayer from Acts chapter 4. It says, Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. So, this is a hostile situation that they're in, but they pray for two things. They pray to speak about Jesus with boldness and for God to do signs and wonders in Jesus' name. And I think this must be God's strategy because these two seem to, we find them hand in hand, courage to speak the gospel with boldness and signs and wonders to accompany the message. Churches alive in the Holy Spirit have many people praying for loving boldness to share the gospel and for signs and wonders to accompany it. And that's the, that is the heart of uh, the message today. This is the one thing I hope you'll maybe take home, remember, write down, take a picture of. Uh, I hope you'll talk about it with your family at home and your faith group as well. But what do you think about that? Churches alive in the Holy Spirit have many people praying for loving boldness to share the gospel and signs and wonders to accompany it. 
My friends, praying is where it all begins. You may not feel like you have any boldness, but at least maybe you could pray for it. You know, look at the, the banners on either side of the worship center here uh, about being a blessed friend to those who don't yet know the Lord. And, and the first of our five practices is to begin with prayer. That's where it starts. So anyway, let's grab a Bible, will you? Uh, there's a Bible in front of you. Hopefully, those of you online, I hope you can find a Bible and follow along with us. And by the way, if you don't have a Bible at home to read, um, we want to give you one today. Just, just ask somebody with a name tag on. We'll put one in your hand. Those of you online, contact us. We'll send one right out to you. Now, last Sunday, we started this series uh, with Paul and Barnabas beginning their first missionary journey. And they left Antioch of Syria. Let's put up the map. Antioch of Syria and then sailed to the island of Cyprus and brought the good news there. And then they sailed north to modern-day Turkey and then walked to another city named Antioch. So we started in Antioch of Syria. This one is Antioch of Pisidia. Uh, and eventually they got kicked out of, of that Antioch and they head southeast to the province of Galatia, uh, beginning with the city of Iconium. And that's where we start today. So let's begin Acts chapter 14, verse 1. At Iconium, Paul and Barnabas went, as usual, into the Jewish synagogue. There, they spoke so effectively that a great number of Jews and Greeks believed. Now, makes you wonder, if so many people believed, and they were so effective speaking, what did they, what did they say? What did Paul and Barnabas say? Uh, in the chapter before, our author, Luke, gives us a five-minute summary of the message of Paul and Barnabas that they delivered at the synagogue in the previous town. And it's about how Jesus is the fulfillment of God's promises to Israel, uh, that he was crucified and raised from the dead, and that he offers forgiveness and new life to everyone who puts their faith in him. I imagine that Paul and Barnabas use that same outline every time when they show up to a new town and go to the synagogue. Our author, Luke, who later traveled with Paul, had probably heard it many times. And just like before, here in Iconium, some believe, but some do not. Verse 2, but the Jews who refused to believe stirred up the other Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brothers. So now... They've got enemies, you know, trouble in Iconium. Uh, how, how do Paul and Barnabas, uh, what do they do? Well, it's, they don't run off. They, they stay longer. Be, why? Because there are new believers here, and they need to learn about, about life in the Lord. And, and plus, these people are bringing their friends and their family to hear about all this as well. Verse 3, so Paul and Barnabas spent considerable time there. Speaking how? Speaking boldly for the Lord, who confirmed the message of his grace by enabling them to what? To perform signs and miracles. Now, I'm sure that back in Antioch of Syria, the, the people of Jesus, those ones who had sent them off on this Holy Spirit adventure, they were praying for him. They were praying that, that Paul and Barnabas would speak boldly for the Lord and that God would confirm their message with signs and wonders. Will you, will you say the, the heart of the message with me? Let's try it together. Churches alive in the Holy Spirit have many people praying for boldness to share the gospel and for signs and wonders to accompany it. I believe that the, the Spirit has been nudging me uh, in the last uh, month or so to be praying more consistently for a couple I know who are missionaries in Israel. You know, it's not easy serving there as a Christian missionary. Uh, Christians are, are allowed to practice their faith in Israel. That's not a problem. But if this couple were ever accused of encouraging a Jew to believe in Jesus... They could be deported. 
So what do I pray? Maybe I could pray like this. Lord, as they serve Christians, Jews, and Muslims, give them wise, loving boldness and let it be accompanied by signs and wonders. Now, the result of Paul and Barnabas' time in Iconium is that the entire town is divided because that's kind of what happens a lot of times, right? For some, Jesus is the Savior of the world. For others, he's a threat to their power. Verse 4, the people of the city were divided. Some sided with the Jews, others with the apostles. And then in verse 5, we learn how bad it got. There was a plot afoot. I love that word, afoot. It sounds so Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> uh, there was a plot afoot among Gentiles and Jews together with their leaders to mistreat them and stone them. Just so you know, getting stoned was something different back then. Just so you know. Uh, they used real stones. It was a credible threat, and, and they'd probably already spent a few months there in Icodium, so they said, okay, let's move on. Uh, verse 7, verse 6 and 7. But they found out about it and fled to the Lycaonian cities of Lystra and Derby, and to the surrounding country where they continued to preach the gospel. Now, Lycaonia was a district in the province of Galatia, Galatia and Lystra was a Gentile town where people spoke the Lycaonian language. Now, interestingly, there's no mention of Paul and Barnabas going to the Jewish synagogue in Lystra, probably because there wasn't one. And when, they, and when they speak to the people about Jesus, um, it's probably in a place like the public square. And they have to start by telling them about the one true God who made the heaven and the earth because these people don't know any of that. One day, uh, some people in Lystra were listening to them tell about, about God and, and about Jesus. And verse 8 introduces one of them. It says, in Lystra... There sat a man who was lame. He had been that way from birth and had never walked. Sounds a lot like the beggar in Jerusalem, doesn't it? Healed by Peter and John. Verse 9 begins, he listened, as Paul, he listened to Paul as he was speaking. Now, try to imagine the scene if you can, maybe an outdoor area. I'm guessing, let's just guess 50 people gathered there in this public square. And I like to picture the, the lame man sitting up off to one side, leaning against a tree. And Paul notices him. He says, Paul looked directly at him, saw that he had the faith to be healed. And, and then I imagine Paul gets this nudge, and he knows this is from the, this is from the Holy Spirit, whispering to him, now's the time. And Paul called out, stand up on your feet. At that, the man jumped up and began to walk. It was amazing. It was, it was a sign. It was a wonder. Now, we, we have learned to be skeptical of that kind of thing, haven't we? You know, America has a history of, of evangelists who are also charlatans. And, and we've heard stories about how they have planted people in the crowd who who uh, then claim to be healed. Well, that's the forgery. But it doesn't mean the real thing doesn't exist. They, there are genuine signs and wonders. Christians here in the U.S. may think, well, we don't see a lot of that kind of thing here, uh, those kind of indisputable miracles. Uh, but I've known people who have said, but what, sometimes when I've gone to another country or continent, I see more of that. It seems to me like it happens more often in a mission situation where, where they're breaking new ground and bringing the, the gospel to new people who have never heard it, just like in the book of Acts. I did hear of a few reports of, of miraculous healings at the, that Holy Spirit outpouring that happened at uh, Asbury University. I can't verify any of that. Um, 
We also know, though, that sometimes when people get really enthusiastic, they can believe and be convinced that they are healed when they are not. And yet, that doesn't discount the fact that sometimes there is an amazing event that cannot be explained by human terms. Um, a couple of months ago, some of you remember I showed a short documentary about that, the out, Asbury Outpouring, it was called. And uh, that Sunday, a woman, a member of our church, uh, came to worship, but she wasn't feeling well at all. She was dealing with a migraine. It wasn't bad enough to just wipe her out, but she, it was still painful. But she wanted to be here. She told me later that she watched that eight-minute film on the outpouring of the Spirit, and by the time it ended, her migraine was gone. Could it have gone away at that time anyway? Uh, she, it's hard to say. You can't prove it one way or the other. But she has the faith to believe that this was a gift from God. And I believe that with her. You know, there, there's a lot that I don't know about these kinds of things, but I do know that if we do not pray and ask God for, for boldness to share uh, about our witness about the Lord, and if we do not pray for signs and wonders to accompany it, we're never going to see it. We, we can't expect to see anything. I want you to know, though, that I see uh, glimpses of boldness and signs and wonders here at Faith Westwood. For example, I just think it is a, a wonderfully, totally bold thing when our prayer teams go out in pairs and offer pray, to pray for people uh, who are waiting in their ve vehicles uh, to pick up their Thanksgiving bags. And, uh, you know, well, I just think that is a, a bold and loving thing to do. And who knows these people when they drive off? What big or small miracle they're going to experience from that. And some of them will say, you know, this happened, and, and that's what I asked them to pray for. They go, Maybe God is really listening to me. In Acts chapter 14, after the pagan people of Lystra see the lame man get up and walk, well, based on their religious background, they figure this means that Paul and Barnabas must be the Greek gods Zeus and Hermes who have come down to visit them. And it takes a while for Paul and Barnabas to disabuse them of that notion. Speaking of abuse, Paul and Barnabas' enemies from Pisidian, Antioch, and Iconium they show up in Lystra and stir up more trouble. And this time, Paul is stoned. And those enemies, they drag his body out of town and drop him there thinking he is dead. His friends gather around him and something happens they do not expect. He gets up. He's okay. It's amazing. Who knows what amazing things will happen when we combine a, a spirit-inspired boldness with a bold witness for the Lord. Now you say, well, what might that look like? Uh, when someone, let's say someone tells you about a need in their life or a problem or something they're struggling with, and this might be a, a friend or a coworker, neighbor, relative, somebody you just met. You know, it's always a good idea to just, just show them how much you care and to empathize with them and uh, to stay with them. And now, sometimes it's also appropriate to add that, hey, I'd like to be praying for you. And hopefully they will receive that well. But sometimes you'll feel like this moment is right and you might get that little inner nudge and you say, would you like me to pray for you right now and uh, watch out because they might say yes now some of you say oh I don't know I don't pray in front of people 
But that's why you have to keep praying for loving boldness. Because God might call you to do something like this. And you want to be ready. And you might even just say, okay, well, I'm not really good at praying, but let's see what God does with it. Just go ahead and say that. And then uh, it doesn't have to be a long prayer. Keep it short. Keep it simple. Uh, But when you do that, you are being a bold witness for Christ. And who knows, you are opening the door to God working in a wondrous way. And then you just watch and see what God does next. Let's pray about that. Lord Jesus, uh, sometimes we're not very bold. (laughs) Um, We're more fearful or just um, wanting to mind our own business. But Lord, we're asking you to let us be a part of the adventure. Send us on your errand by this Holy Spirit. And Lord, will you give me boldness to share about you by my actions and words. Show show me who I can bless as a friend. And Lord, uh, whatever you want to do, but we just want to say, let, let that message be confirmed by some kind of sign or wonder or miracle or answered prayer. Lord, whatever you want. And Lord Jesus, I, am, I imagine that there are some here today who are sensing that you are calling them even now. Even now. They, they feel faith rising up in them to believe in you. To put, to put their lives in your hands. Give them the courage to boldly say, Jesus, I need you. I am a sinner and I have made a mess of things so often. So now, Lord, I turn it all over to you. I'm yours. Come and make your home in me through the Holy Spirit. And if you would like to make that prayer your prayer today, I would ask that you would confirm that by lifting your hand. Just say, count me in on that, Lord. Count me. Lift your hand. And now I want us to take a couple of minutes to each of us to have an opportunity to quietly bring to God whatever's on our hearts. And you can pray where you're seated. If you'd like to come forward and stand or kneel at the steps, you can do that too.